Hey, I'm Lexi and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you saw my video I made, I want to say a month or so ago, about how it's been going with the new clothes I bought this spring, you'll know that I said that I had regrets, right? I mean, it's like right in the thumbnail, I have regrets. One of the things I talked about was that the clothes felt very um, office lady. Like I wanted higher quality clothes, but I think that the clothes are like not quite right for me. They're a little bit like too formal, too office-y, too business -y. So I've been thinking about it a lot the last couple months. And, you know, I have these clothes already. I've worn them a few times. Some, some of them I even had tailored like my navy blue pants. And I want to wear these clothes, but I want to try to figure out how to make them something that I will enjoy more and feels more like me. And I was thinking about it a lot and I realized that one of the big differences between how I was dressing and kind of like my goal style is that my clothes uh, previously had a lot higher percentage of like DIY items. And it really made my clothes feel personalized. It really made them feel like me. And I think that also gives it like that like cool like rock and roll edge kind of. So I want to do that again. I want to DIY some of my clothes. So this is kind of like a multi-part series. And today's video, I'm going to be going through and kind of showing you guys all the clothes that I have that I still have that I haven't gotten rid of that I've DIY'd and some of the types of things that I've done to them. And I'm doing that for me to try to get more ideas because I was kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm not feeling super inspired. So today's just gonna be me going through all the DIY clothes that I already have. Um, if you guys saw my declutter series, you'll know that some of these I am not wearing anymore. They're too small or I've just decided like, this is not the way I wanna dress going forward, but I've kept a lot of the stuff that was like super DIY that I put a lot of work in, in a keepsake box. And some of this stuff is clothes that doesn't like quite fit me now, whether it's too big or too small. I've also talked a lot about how I fluctuate sizes. Um, I fluctuate in like a 20 pound range. And for me, that means I go from like a size eight to like a size 14, which is kind of insane because I know a lot of other friends of mine can put on 10 pounds or whatever and still be wearing the same clothes. But for me, it, it makes a huge difference. So I have a lot of clothes in like different sizes, um, but I'm gonna pull them back out and you'll recognize a bunch of these. And some of them I haven't really shown on the channel before, but uh, I love them. I love anything that you put that much time and work into. For me, it means that I just, I value it even more. And none of this was done with sewing machines. This was all done by hand, which is kind of insane the amount of time that I have put into some of these clothes. And you'll see what I mean when I show them to you. Well, let's get started. And I wanna start with t-shirts. Now, these are items that I don't know that it's particularly, uh, like the, the way I DIY t-shirts is kind of unique to t-shirts because they're just like plain cotton. And a lot of the clothes that I feel like I wanna DIY going forward are not t-shirts, but there's some techniques here that I kind of forgot that I had done that um, kind of excite me again. So the first category of stuff I wanna show you is like the most basic DIY. And that's basically just like cutting the collar out and maybe cutting the bottom off the shirt, which is pretty simple. But it can be tricky because I've definitely messed it up before. So the very basic idea uh, would just be to cut cut the collar off. Now I tend to go for a boat neck. I've always thought I looked really good in that. And if you guys know that I've talked about like my kitty body type and getting kitty body typed, um, I'm a soft dramatic. And soft dramatics are supposed to emphasize a T-shape, which is something that I kind of learned about myself a long time ago, I already knew. Um, so that's why a lot of these you'll see they've had the neck made wider to show off my shoulders. So that's what I did with this. This is uh, my fiance's former band that is no longer like active. The band broke up, well, I don't know, five, six years ago. And I love wearing this shirt and I, I cut the collar. It, it does still stay on the shoulder, but it is cut like that. But the next one I have is a King Crimson Tour t-shirt. Oh, always inside out. I put away my clothes inside out a lot of times. It's a King Crimson Tour t-shirt from 1981. And I cut this, I meant it to be the same as the previous one, but I accidentally cut it a little wide. So it's kind of, it can go off either shoulder, which is kind of fun, but not quite what I intended because I didn't realize that the fabric was so soft and would stretch. And that's where it's very easy to make mistakes. I've learned the hard way that when you cut 
like a jersey cotton, whatever this type of like soft t-shirt cotton is, it tends to like stretch out. And how it fits when you're wearing it is different than how it'll fit when you cut it. Like, uh, and here's an example of that. I, this is one that I messed up and I can't wear. So I put this t-shirt on and then while I was wearing it, I drew marks around where I wanted to cut the sleeves off. Now, I did not think about the fact that it was a little, like it was tight on me, it was tight across the bust. And so once I freed up the armhole, that it would no longer be stretched. And so now when I wear it, the front of the shirt um, cuts down the middle of my chest, which doesn't really work unless I wear another thing under it, which I don't, let me try it on. I could wear it in a case like today where I'm wearing like a little like bralette type of top. Ugh. Okay, so you can see it's just a little bit too big on the sides. When I move, it has a tendency to um, show my boob. And actually right now, I'm a little on the thinner end. It's okay, it covers the front. But definitely when I'm a little heavier, it starts to be like this, which is like not <laughs> ideal or flattering. So it's you can mess this up, but um, it's generally not hard. I have a lot of t-shirts like that. And I'm not going to show them all where I've just basically cut off the neck hole and maybe cut the bottom if they're too long or if the sleeves are too long, I've cut off the sleeves. Although right now I'm kind of into a longer sleeve. I think everybody is. If you look back like 10 years ago, a lot of the t-shirts were ending here and now like a longer t-shirt style is more flattering. And, and yeah, I have kind of, you know, tastes change with trends and it's not like I want to be trendy but my taste has kind of changed in that too so I'm a lot less likely to cut shirts off in the sleeves as I used to be but that is something that I have done in the past. The next group of t-shirts that I have are things that I put a lot more work into to reshape how this shirt fits me. This is a shirt from an Italian band called Judah. So what I've done here is I cut down the center and then I just tied it up. And what that allowed me to do was to take it in in the waist. So basically I tied it far tighter at the bottom. And you can see, like, you can't even see the side seams anymore. It, ha it gives up a little bit more of a three-dimensional shape. This one, I also did cut the sleeves off, but not a lot, just enough so that it was no longer sewed and then it kind of rolls. I really like wearing this in the summer. This is something that fits me when I'm a little bigger, better. So it's something I like to keep so if my weight fluctuates I can still wear it and this is very old this is one of those two small things but I it was one of the first things that I I don't know I tried to DIY it and I used this blue thread so basically I cut it on the side to make it smaller and then I used blue thread here to sew it back up smaller now I did not give myself enough room in the arms or the like under basically the side of my boob so over time and with washing the string has kind of come apart so the stress of it like broke the string and this one is completely open on that side this side I've safety pinned it together so it stays but it's still a little tight on me although I did wear it recently I think and this was a, a friend's band like a long time ago the next item is a Guns N' Roses t-shirt that I have and I uh, this is the tour t-shirt from when they came to Seattle and I, I kind of didn't do a lot to this but I made it the boat neck like you see but I also wanted to make it a little smaller tighter up here so I actually cut and re-tied it which makes it um, tighter and then I did the same thing it's kind of that cold shoulder effect that was really in a couple years ago so I made myself a cold sh shoulder top out of a Guns N' Roses t-shirt and the last item is a J. Crew t-shirt now I actually did not do this to the shirt. I got this from a friend and she did that. She wrote uh, The Cormans, which is a band. And also I think she put some cuts in it. I still wear this all the time because I think it looks really cool under a blazer and that's how I wear it. I wear it to work and such. Um, I really like this and I wear this a lot. I think what makes it special is that it's sharpied on. And, you know, when you're young and you really like a band and you don't have the money for the t-shirt or whatever, um, this was like a cool thing that people like used to do. I guess people still do it, but when they well, when we were younger, you know, we, uh, we would draw the name of the band on the shirt ourselves, make our own band t-shirt. So this is one that I love and I think that I'll be wearing it for a long time. Also because it's J. Crew, it's just like the shirt itself is just like really thick material and nicely made. So that's... Pro tip, if you want to do DIY shirts, like invest in a quality shirt to begin with because it will just, you know, you might think oh, I'll just get the cheapest one because I'm going to DIY it. But actually, 
One of the reasons why I keep wearing this and love wearing it is because it is a very high quality material. The last shirt is a t-shirt that a long time ago I got when I went to Vanuatu. This is their local beer, Tusker Beer. And I made this into a tank top, so I cut it. And what I did is, the when you cut the bottom off, that sewed edge, that seam, actually makes really good like strips that won't stretch out if you want to cut and then lace up the sides. So I just wore this uh, this last weekend on my bachelorette party. I'll put a picture of me wearing it in here. But um, yeah, so I think that looking back at these t-shirts, something that I really like the look of is the lacing up the sides. So that's a technique I'm going to try to remember and Get in, and I'm inspired by that and I want to incorporate that technique that's something that I really liked in some of my other clothes. The whole other one where it's like cut and then just the ends tied, I don't like as much. And I have to say that when you're wearing them, if it's somewhere on the back and you lean back, it's pretty uncomfortable. But I really do love the lace up the side, so I'm going to remember that one going forward. Next, I've got a couple things that I've studied. So I've talked before on this channel how I'm into Japanese fashion and I'm into Japanese Lolita fashion. I studied one of my Japanese dresses. Now, I don't wear Japanese fashion. Like, it doesn't mix in with my normal wardrobe. It's something that I keep separate. I've got a handful of dresses, and I just wear them to events where we all get together and wear the clothes. So the clothes don't really mingle with my regular wardrobe. But this was a really fun opportunity for me to take my regular style and mix it with Japanese fashion. So I've studied the straps, and I put um, cone studs down the front. I do love the way this double stud here has made this like much thicker. And honestly, I haven't done like pyramid studs, like a coating of pyramid studs like this before. And I really like the way it turned out. So I think I'm gonna remember that method in the future. And the other thing, like clothing item that before I get to the outerwear and things like that is this pair of shorts. This was a vintage pair of Wranglers, pre-distressed. I did not do that. And I got this at a like a vintage store in San Francisco. Now I got these, these are called 77 cone studs and I got them in gold, which is not as normal as silver. And I really like the effect. I really love the effect of this sort of organic shape here where it's a big uh, mass of, of studs here and they sort of fan out. And I also want to, and I'm kind of inspired by that. I love the organic nature of studs. A lot of time with studs, People can get very geometric with it, kind of like with the straps, it's very geometric, or they'll stud in rows along seams or along, you know, they'll put them in stripes. And I love the organic nature of this. So I want to remember uh, that I can do things organically. I can use studs to make organic shapes. That's a really, something I'm really inspired by. So I want to keep that technique in mind as well. I guess to address the other thing that you can see behind me, it's these boots. I had never painted a pair of boots before this. So these are Doc Martens and I sort of just painted them how I want. They're not symmetrical, they're painted differently. I painted this side and then I was like, oh, this kind of reminds me of clown shoes. So I didn't do it on this side and I didn't do it on this boot at all. I did make this sort of crosshair thing by dipping a soda can in paint and using that as like a circle stamp and then painting across. These have been worn a lot. Originally, this was a cross here, and this was completely white at the toe. I mean, definitely adding to the <laughs> clown shoe impression. I think this is really cool. I've only painted a couple of my things. Most of the things I do, I sew, or I put in studs, and so this painting idea is really fascinating to me because I think that could be a really cool way to add detail to some of my clothes. A lot of these clothes, like you, I've learned the hard way separately that you can't put studs in stretchy material. Painting is a really good idea for some of my stretchy things. Now I have that off the shoulder blue sweater that I, I'm not a huge fan of and I was thinking of painting. That might be a terrible idea, but we'll talk about that in the next video when I start pulling out all the clothes that I have an idea to DIY. The last things I wanted to go through are all of my outerwear. Now I have a whole bunch and that goes back to it needing to be a thick material and needing to be non-stretchy. I think that's why outerwear tends to be something that people more often stud and DIY because the materials are thicker and they're usually non-stretch. So first up are my vests and I've got this one. You guys will know that I put this away in sort of a keepsake box. This one was nicknamed 
I nicknamed it my dream vest because I bought this dress when I'm dress vest. I bought this vest when I was really tiny and then but as soon as I started DIYing it I had gone up a couple sizes so it never actually fit so I spent a ton of time DIYing it and I've never actually worn it because it's too small and it's a vintage acid wash vest. Now I really like and you'll see this I've did this in a couple places where I just stud one portion. What I like about this is it very much uh, reminds me of like armor the way it's on the shoulder and I like that it's asymmetrical so I want to remember that maybe I kind of sometimes get wrapped up in things being even and like one doing things on both sides and just like I was talking about with the organic shape of the cone studs on the shorts I I want to remember this sort of asymmetrical just doing things on one side so and I, but I also like filling a whole area so that it resembles like armor. That's really cool to me. And then I love the idea of a back patch that's a tiger. This is not the only one you'll see. And I feel like I sometimes get carried away. I get carried away and put too much stuff on something. And I like the simplicity of that. And I want to remember that. That more is not always more. This vest is my vest that I wear all the time. And it has a lot of things going for it. Interesting techniques that I, I pretty much forget about. So there's this technique down here, which I didn't do a very good job on this particular item, where I actually sewed a patch to the inside, and then I cut the fabric away to reveal it. Uh, this was me being, like, edgy. So edgy. And I didn't do a very good job because I didn't leave enough of the fringe that you can really tell without looking at it super closely that it is actually coming in from the behind. And that is a, I don't remember where I saw that and how I got the idea, but I've learned from this how to do it properly if I do want to do it. I also sewed on a, a leather strip here with some spikes and I like this. I like the idea of this leather strip and then with the spikes on that. That is something very interesting and unique. And the other thing that I've done to this besides put a back patch on, is that I covered one panel with this cloth. Now you can see this is like perfectly to the edge. It fits perfectly. I don't know anything about professional sewing and I would not have been able to do this if I was like cutting the piece of fabric out and perfectly sewing it in. So this is all hand sewn and I just hold it down as I go to make it smooth and get it in. And you'll see a bit more of that coming up. Same with this patch. I cut this out from a t-shirt and as I went along, I folded the cut edge under and hand stitched it all the way around so that you just have the can of beer and it doesn't look like a picture of a can of beer on a patch. It's just the, the can itself is the patch. So that's an interesting thing is making, making patches out of other things that I love. Like I loved that Fiddler t-shirt, but it was really huge on me. So I was like, well, I'll just buy it and then use it for a patch. And I was really happy with that because then I get to use it even though the shirt doesn't fit me right. So I want to remember a couple things from this. This next vest is a little too small on me, but it's something that I definitely think could fit. And once again, what I've done on here is I've sewn in a panel of black velvet. And this was once again done by hand. There's no way that I could have done this with a machine. I had to do it by hand. I recut the buttonholes through the fabric and sewed really bad buttonholes. And I like this effect. I like pops of black velvet on things. And once again, I have a back patch that I was from a t-shirt and I just sewed it carefully so that it matched up along the seams. It makes a really good back patch. It kind of fit perfectly between these seams to make it really feel like it came as part of the vest because it's just sewn so tightly to the seams. And that's once again, all by hand. I don't think that I could have, if I tried to do that with machine, it would have looked like crap. My last vest is this leather vest. <laughs> that I loved back in the day. And an interesting technique I wanna point out here is that I painted here, but it's with negative space. So what I did was I cut out tape in the letters of this band, the Peacocks that I really liked, and then I put them on the vest, and then I painted over it, and then I peeled the letters off. And I really like the effect that's given. So as I mentioned before, I want to consider painting. Oh, this is caught, it's caught in my shirt. Uh, 
I mentioned before that painting was a technique that I want to remember and consider doing. Well, this is another technique that involves painting, but with negative space, and I think that's really cool. I was talking before about the geometric nature of studs and how a lot of people are prone to, I think this is like very common you see on like punk clothes where people line an edge or a seam. And I like that, but I think what I like better are more organic and asymmetrical shapes. And I think I realize that now by looking at my stuff, which ones I feel more drawn to. And it's definitely the ones that are not just along the edges, not just along the seams. The last few DIY items that I have to show you guys today are my jackets. This jacket is my most favorite, most special jacket, but I can't wear anymore because it's so old, it's absolutely just dissolving. Now, I've done a couple, a lot of stuff to this. Number one is that the inside was falling apart, so I hand sewed in a lining, and that was quite difficult. That took a lot of time because this piece of fabric it's almost like three-dimensional sh in its shaping, so it was really hard to get even, but I did that. Um, secondly, I also had to do a lot of repairs to this because the fabric was just coming apart. This was where I would always put my purse, so it was dissolving, and the seam was completely shredding the fabric, so I put in a million stitches, um, if you guys could see that, to make it um, tough and thicker. And that's a really cool idea, the idea of reinforcing the areas that get more wear. I have a couple cardigans that are wearing out in the elbows, so I wanna look into doing something cool that is reinforcing those areas, but also taking that opportunity to add a creative element to it. You can see that that happened in more places. These patches are all places where it was absolutely coming apart. And the last time I, I sewed this, I didn't want it to look like patched, so I actually sewed a patch on from the inside so that it's like fraying, but there's material there. And then the edge completely started dissolving, so I once again hand stitched in some of this black velvet here and at the top of the collar where the fabric was just completely just disintegrating. I, I can't wear this anymore. Here's where I put an elbow patch where my elbow was coming through. Yeah, this is this is an this is what the other sleeve looked like. The this the fabric was just completely fraying and it like undid the stitch. And if you re-sew it, it just comes out. The fabric is so weak, it just comes out through there. So yeah, this jacket I can't wear anymore. I love it. I wore it all the time for years and years, but I just can't wear it anymore. So that's fine, but it's good inspiration for me. I love the idea of the way for this jacket, the places where it was falling apart, I took that opportunity to be creative and find different ways of patching it and holding it together that really looked cool to me. The second to last item is my leather jacket and I wear this all the time. I haven't done a lot to this because it is so beautiful. It's such good quality leather that I didn't want to mess it up too much. So the back is plain and I, I like that. My style is less like overtly like punk as it was. Like the ones that I have that are super studded, that that's more like punk and I'm a little bit more just like rock and roll now, a little bit like hyper focused on all the studs and all the patches. But I like this because this has a little bit of studs, but not too many. It's asymmetrical. So it's only done on, like that on one side. The other side I just have buttons and it's very organic. I didn't follow the edge, make, a, make it perfectly square across the top. I really just let it be organic and I shaped it around. Um, this pin from a band I really like. And then on the rest of this jacket, I just took the opportunity to put in some pins of bands I like. So that's good to that's good to remember. Once again, reinforcing. I, I get really caught up when I'm doing art projects on making things even. Even when I'm doodling, I'll do like a line here and then I'll be like, oh, I have to do a line on the other side to make it balance. So this is a good reminder that I like the end result better when it's not balanced and it's not in neat rows. Just... <laughs> just to remind myself that. The last item is actually in progress, and you guys, it's been in progress for like a year and a half. I've owned this jacket. I got this from Stitch Fix, which, I mean, God, that's 2018, and I wore it without doing anything to it for like a year, and then since I wanna say 2019, it's been just not all the way done. I'm so close to the end. I only have, let me see, from like, I only have one edge of this to sew on left. I've done 
80% of it, but this is all by hand and it takes a really long time. I don't want it to come off so you'll see the size of the stitches is they're really small. It just takes a really long time. And I was thinking about what else I should do to this, but you know, I kind of am drawn to the jackets that I have that don't have a lot going on, just have a single back patch, a single statement. And my cat is once again on my lap. Anyway, back to the jean jacket. Um, what I really realized looking through all these other things is the ones that I liked the best were the ones where the back just had a single statement. So I think, now that I think about it, I had been considering doing something here. I think I'm gonna finish sewing this, and then if I do anything else to this, it'll be on the front or the sleeve, but not the back. I think I wanna leave the back like that, so that's a good reminder. And yeah, those are all my DIY items that I currently have. I have had a lot more in the past. I don't know, I've just gotten rid of some things over the years as they've worn out, but this is what I have right now, and this has really inspired me, so I'm really glad I've done this. And the next video in this series will be pulling out the clothes that I feel like there's something missing or I feel like they're not rock and roll enough or if they're not me or they're too office-y. Pulling those clothes out and thinking about what I can do to them and figuring out what techniques would be best for each item. Well, that is today's video. And I hope you guys liked seeing all the DIY items in my wardrobe. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye. Let's go.